Well, we're going to call the meeting to order at 7.42. If you could please join us for the pledge of allegiance. If you could please join us for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I should have made the announcement that in accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM, may be recorded by other local media, and it, it is being recorded via Zoom. We have a hybrid <coughs> meeting this evening, so the town is also recording it via Zoom. And we're going to jump right to recognizing, um, we're actually joined by our esteemed Senator Bruce Tarr, and we're joined by our esteemed director who's leaving us, unfortunately. So we're going to jump right to recognizing Mary Prenny, who we all know and love. So welcome. It seems like you brought a My family. lovely group of people with you, and we're probably joined by people that want to participate. So let's kick this off. Mr. Gilberto, do you want to do us a summary of all that Mary has done for the staff? <laughs> well, Certainly. I don't know if we have enough time for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said summary. <laughs> I will, uh, I will do my best uh, to, uh, to summarize, but uh, you are right, uh, Mary's service to the town is, uh, is, has been extensive. Um, for those who may not know, Mary is currently the Director of Elder Services um, and also the Director of our Senior Center uh, up at the Third Meeting House. Um, she uh, has been the Director for 17 years, I don't have my notes in front of me, Mary, I'm sorry. 17 years uh, yes. as director and 21 years working for the town? As assistant director, yeah. In, including her tenure as assistant director with Mrs. O'Leary, I believe in the mid-19, the, the early 2000s, correct? Mm -hmm. So uh, her tenure with the Council on Aging, uh, working for the town, um, is, uh, is lengthy. Um, she also is uh, a elected, or was uh, until recently an elected member of the Housing Authority as well, um, an active member of our um, community impact team, um, I believe from the very beginning, although it is in, it predates my time here, but she's been a, a regular participant um, within the community impact team as well as the um, it, its subgroups and its many, uh, many programs as well. So um, she's also been, um, I think, a very vocal and active member of our department head core as well, um, you know, always willing to sort of share the perspective um, to remind us to keep in mind the perspective of, uh, of our seniors um, when um, sometimes maybe we're not giving that consideration in our decision making and something I've always really valued um, you know, that, that Mary's brought to the table. She also was uh, a big part of us trying to sort of have our human services work a little more closely together over the past few years, um, including the Veterans Agent and Youth Services Director. Um, and um, COVID disrupted that a little bit, but in some ways made the, made the work even that much more important. So uh, on to Zoom, we all went and phone calls, et cetera. Um, and, and she's been a huge, uh, huge part of that, trying to grow that group. Um, I'll also just note, you know, she's been a regular contributor facilitator for the annual Thanksgiving dinner with Senator Tarr and Representative Jones. Senator Tarr being here this evening. Um, uh, as well as countless other volunteer things that she's done above and beyond the director's role for elder services that I, I'm sure that other board members could probably name a handful themselves. Um, so um, I, I'm, I'm happy for Mary that, that she's you know, able to retire and that, um, you know, that she has, um, you know, God willing, maintained her health. Um, I'm sad for us and, and for our community. Um, Mary has been such a, an advocate and um, such an important part of the fabric of our senior community and uh, having us understand what that means. Um, we'll struggle to find somebody to come and continue that work, um, but um, we will try to do so. Um, and I guess I just want to thank Mary for her, uh, for her service. I want to recognize Brad who's there, who is often there to help in the <laughs> hours outside of the, uh, the work day and Mary's regular work that she has to do. Um, as Elder Services Director. He's always there to help. So you both have contributed so much to our community. Um, so thank you for the opportunity to speak, Madam Chair. Ms. Mary, would you like to hear from us 
or would you like to speak? Because I can see that you have something. Oh, it's you. just, believe it or not, very brief. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind yeah. coming up to the table with a microphone in? Um, so we can hear you? Okay. And that we have now, I'll wait. All we right, right. okay. Mary, Mary likes to get the last word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This will never change. Mary likes to get the last word. <laughs> All right, am I Mr. O'Leary, you're up. All right. It's my pleasure to be up. It is my pleasure to, uh, to, to see that Mary and Brad are, uh, as they both say, going on a new adventure. Uh, but again, the, the town is uh, suffering, uh, going to be suffering a, a significant loss uh, with, with Mary's departure. Um, I, I know for a fact that uh, this is not a Monday through Friday, you know, nine to five, never has been, never was going to be, never would be, and it's, uh, I have witnessed firsthand that it's seven days a week, 24 hours a day, <coughs> for many that do know, but for those that don't know, uh, Mary and Brad have been suing my next door neighbor for, well, we've been there 34, you've been there 44. Years, so uh, for us, this is a big move too. Uh, but at the same time, I also know and have witnessed, as I said, she's getting calls 10 o'clock at night, 2 o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning, Saturday afternoons, um, and always quick response, always there to, to assist uh, in those calls that were made for people who were not calling to say hello and how you're doing today but because they're in need. And Mary has always been uh, quick and effectively responding to people's needs in this community for uh, 21, 22 years here. And uh, you know, she, she had, uh, well, I don't know if we call it a pleasure, or the experience of working with my mother, <laughs> which is definitely an experience. I grew up with my mother, so, and I love my mother. But my mother was an experience. And Mary has experienced and survived the experience. Uh, and uh, survived extremely well to the point where she actually you know, took over the job. And it, it wasn't an easy job to take over at the time, and it wasn't an easy job to carry on for another 17 or 18 years, and she's done a, a fantastic job. You know, and she's done it uh, in a passionate way. Um, she's immersed herself in it. She's been a strong advocate. Uh, she's been extremely compassionate. You know, and uh, as a result, has earned the respect of uh, this community, not just the elder in the community, but the community as a whole. Because people have come to realize that she's been such an integral part of the community in order to uh, deliver the services that have been necessary. And sometimes to expand beyond the services and our capabilities as a community, you know, where she uh, actually served as <coughs> president of the Mystic Valley Elder Services uh, and been able to reach out to other um, areas and other agencies in order to help single individual people within the community as well as the elder community as a whole. So, you know, I think all of us uh, try and do our best to hope to leave our community a, a better place than we found it. And I can honestly say, uh, Mary, you've done that. And uh, you know, we're going to miss you. Uh, but we know you're not out of our lives, <laughs> for sure. So it's just you know, 20 minutes down the road when there's no traffic. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, for Sue and I, you know, we love you. And uh, as we look next door, <laughs> the lights are going on, but they're not as bright. This is why I should have went for it. <laughs> So, thank you for your service. Uh, we look forward to you uh, continue to be around a lot. And uh, we also know that this is not done alone, Mary alone, because you know, with all those calls and all those uh, times, uh, Mr. Handyman, Brad, <laughs> had to answer the calls too. You know, when the fuses went out in people's homes, or furniture needed to be replaced, <coughs> things needed to be fixed. Um, seeing his call, he responded. So we're fortunate, you left the place a better place than you found it, and you've earned the respect and affection of the community as a whole. Next. All right.
Mr. Walner. That's a tough to, act to follow. Wish I was just going to say, we should let him go last next time. <laughs> Anyways, I've known Mary and I've known Kathleen through our daughters, right? So we've known each other for decades now, um, safe to say. And uh, um, I jumped into town volunteering through Mary because I knew Mary and I knew that she was looking for people on the board. And that was about 10 or 11 years ago. And that's how I became aware of senior issues and all the things that were going on. And Mary and I have I've been on the board for a number of years. Um, got to see firsthand what's going on at the Senior Center. Uh, we did the CIT, I think we started the SSAT together. That was our, our big start. And she was involved in doing all the other um, uh, subcommittees we did after that. So um, it's really because of Mary I became aware of the issues. And it's Mary who would speak up at times I would never expect her to speak up. And she would speak up openly, even just re recently, to express what seniors are really thinking. It would always take me back at your insight and how well you could articulate that and speak out. So um, it'll be a huge loss not to have Mary around. Um, we're going to do our best to try to pick up where you left off. Hopefully you'll be proud of us and you know, see what's going on. But uh, you know, there's many, many people, everybody knows you. Anybody who's a senior knows you. Anybody who isn't a senior knows you. And when you speak, people have respected everything you have to say. And that's, that's very impressive. So I'm um, going to miss you. I'm glad you're going to be down in the Boston area. Now we know a place to park. We want to go to there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm glad to see you all here together. It's nice to see Kathleen and everybody here together to celebrate. With you. So thank you so much. Thank Thanks for the opportunity for me to be able to serve with you. Thank you. Yes, that's true, though. So, I've known Ms. Perny the least, met her this year, um, and I've enjoyed the opportunity to because I don't think a lot of people my age who have moved in the last decade in North Reading get to meet a lot of people that are, especially for, you know, other services, right? I mean, unless you have a parent in it, it's not like it's the first thing you're worried about. So. But what I noticed is, even though I later came to find out that sh this was going to be her last year, you could never tell what some of the things, the brief things we worked on together with some of the calls and planning. It was, it sounded like somebody who was going to be here for the entirety of a project we were talking about that's going to take years. So that, that just shows that usually on the way out, it, it's kind of like those last three days before New Year's in the office. Everybody's there but not really doing anything. And that wasn't the case with Mrs. Perny. I mean, from, you know, it's like, it, it was almost like, wow. I didn't know she was about to uh, retire. It sure, didn't, it sure didn't sound like that on that call. I mean, she was really passionate about it. So um, I can see how it's going to be a loss. Um, it's very difficult to replace those that have been doing something for a decade so well. And also, I did not know that at 2 a.m. Uh, answering calls, but it doesn't surprise me hearing it. So uh, wish you the best of luck. Um, you know, maybe once we get sewer and get as many restaurants as you'll be able to walk to when you move to Boston, maybe you'll move back. <laughs> so but other than that, uh, you know, good congratulations on your retirement and uh, hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is Gonzalez. So Mary and I have sat on the housing authority together. That's how I got to know Mary. Um, I think I've been there five years, unbelievably. How long were you on there, Mary? Uh, 16 years. 16 years. So she was our knowledge. <laughs> um, no matter what we talked about, we could refer to Mary to what has happened over the years there. And the thing about Mary that I found out very early on is when we were talking business, she always brought it back to the people to the residents, to the people that live there, and let's not forget how that's gonna make them feel, and let's remember yeah. them, always, 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 that's where her mind was at, um, how it would affect them. And I'm hoping that we'll always refer to that and, and have Mary in our head <laughs> when we're making any kind of decision. So it's been more than a pleasure um, to have gotten to know you and sat on that board with you, Mary, and I wish you all the all the happiness in the world. And so nice to see your family here. Thank and, um, you. It's a great loss. The residents are going to miss you. You have such a bond with them, and they 
they all know you and love you. So, well, maybe not all of them. Not all of them. Most of them. <laughs> um, so, thank you, and we, we will miss you. Yeah, if I could describe Mary, I'm going to echo a lot of this, the, what was already said, but I would say Mary, Mary, the two things that strike me about Mary is her tenacity and her compassion, and that, you know, there, there was a force to be reckoned with bringing a lot of these age-friendly initiatives to our attention in our faces repeatedly. Even during budgets, all of the things that you focused in on were you know, age-friendly initiatives and bringing this to the forefront for us and always reminding, reminding us of elderly issues. And Mrs. Gonzalez is right. Some, some of the people who you served for the town, you, you really were their only connection to the town and a lot of the things that you did for them. And that's so appreciated and that's, you know, a significant loss, not just for the town, but it's a significant loss for that vulnerable population that you've been serving for so long. They, you're their friend. Mm -hmm. And that says yeah. a lot about the way in which you minister to the elderly population with such compassion. Um, and I also think that um, by that example in your department, I feel like you've helped curate or at least shape a staff that's able to execute mm -hmm. its function the same way. And that is kind of an inval invaluable impact that you're going to have moving forward, even though you're not going to be with us. You, your staff is so friendly, so caring, so compassionate to the population that they serve. And the other thing about Mary is it wasn't just elder events. We saw her at all events for the town. So just really dedicated in terms of your, dedicated in terms of your drive for doing things for everyone in the town. So it's going to be a pretty big loss for us. We wish you the best, though. And you know, like Mr. O'Leary said, in this new adventure to the both of you and to your family, you probably get, hopefully, to see, <coughs> to see you a lot more than they have because you've devoted so much of your time and attention to el the elderly in our town. So we thank you so much for your service. We do have a, a plaque that we have. <laughs> we want. I'll read it to you, and then we'll take. We'll we'll hear from our dignitaries too. But this bit, and then we'll hear from you too. That this is presented to Mary Prenny in recognition of her 21 years of dedicated service to the town of North Reading Elder Services Department, including 17 years as director, given by the selectmen on behalf of a grateful community, December 20, 2021. And we'll, we'll hand you that and maybe do some pictures later, but if we could call our dignitaries up to speak, that would be wonderful. So thank you for your service, Mary. Wherever you're comfortable with. Well, thank you, Madam Chair, and through the members of the board. I have to say that it's always good to be in North Reading, but particularly nice when I get referred to as a dignitary. So uh, you can plan on seeing me at every select board meeting after this. It's, um, it's always great to, to be um, with all of you, and, it, and it's always great to think about how special this community is because of the people that make it special. And if there is any person that could ever be considered sort of the consummate member of the team, it is Mary Prennan. And one thing that I do want to say is that uh, my legislative partner and friend, Representative Brad Jones, could not be with us tonight. It's a busy time of year. There were some scheduling issues. But he very much uh, wanted to join in recognizing you, Mary, for all of your efforts. And it's very interesting because North Reading has a great history of caring for its seniors. And a big part of that history uh, was the incredible Edie O'Leary. And Brad and I had the wonderful opportunity to work with Edie over so many years and to see her really um, set the pace uh, for what it means to be a good champion for seniors in this community. And when Edie departed, we thought about what the succession of leadership is going to be. And Mary picked up that baton and has run with it at an incredible pace. And it is true that Mary has been someone who has been first and foremost a part of the community but always reminded us that seniors were a critical part of that community and could never be forgotten in any discussion, in any way, at any time. But she also made us understand that 
our senior community is part of the overall community and we all need to work together we all need to support each other and it's that sense of interdependence that I think has been really important about the way that she has approached the role of being the director of elder services and of course when you assume that role you really assume responsibility really as has been mentioned several times for the welfare of our seniors in, a, in an almost 24 7 kind of a way and Mary has done that whether it be with the day-to-day -day needs that they have whether it be nutrition or education or health care or ensuring that someone does have a good meal or an assistive device or a ride to get to an appointment those day-to-day -day things are the things that add up to an incredible difference for the people in our community who are a bit older than the rest of us. And she's done that. But all the while that she's done that, she's also never lost sight of the big picture, the 30,000 foot view about where we should be going with regard to policy and where we should be going in terms of our support services so that we continue to be innovative and don't accept the status quo. And all of you know, Mary is not one to accept the status quo. And she has been a powerful advocate and you use the terms, uh, Mrs. Manipelli, about tenacity and caring and compassion. And those two qualities really epitomize, Mary, how you approach things. You're always cheerful. You're diplomatic. But you're always forceful. And we know that when you are championing an issue, there is no retreat. There is no step back. There is only forward progress. And we've seen that in so many ways in this community. And we have seen it not only in your role at the Council on Aging, but also with the Housing Authority, also um, with Mystic Valley Elder Services, because whenever our senior community has needed you, you've been there. And Brad, whenever Mary has needed you, you've been there. <laughs> yes. And that's why it's wonderful to see the entire family here to celebrate, or other members of the family, to be able to celebrate the legacy that Mary has built, a legacy of integrity, a legacy of caring and compassion, a legacy of innovation, a legacy of being truly influential in the life of the community. Now, there, it is true that Representative Jones and I, um, we do get calls <coughs> almost at all hours of the day and night from Mary. <laughs> and when you're in the legislative delegation, you know that Mary is a force to be reckoned with, whether it's for the uh, Council on Aging formula grant, or whether it be for other kinds of supports, uh, Mary has not only thought about what it means to make a difference locally in North Reading, she's thought about what it means to make a difference for seniors all across the state. And I would not be lying if I, I wouldn't, uh, if I didn't say that, you know, when you get that call, sometimes you, you see it coming in and you take a deep breath for a minute <laughs> and you say, okay, what's coming next? But what's coming next is always something that comes from the heart, always something that will make a difference for seniors and always something that's been well thought out and well reasoned. And that has been Mary Prenny's service. And also we've enjoyed the, the other times that we've had with you and doing senior meals, which we've had to adapt to a little bit for Thanksgiving. And uh, Mary was right out there with us uh, risking uh, her own safety, being standing very close um, to the line of cars as they drove by and we put food into the vehicles. Mary didn't back up. She pushed me a little closer a couple of times, but she didn't back up. And that's because Mary's never backed up. She's always gone forward. And she's always gone forward with her heart and with her mind. And the community is the better off for it. We're all the better off for it. So it's an honor to be able to come uh, again on behalf of, of Brad and myself um, to recognize you tonight. And I want to thank the board and the administrator for taking this time and giving us the opportunity to be able to all thank you, Mary. And, and I would tell you that you know, we have looked at your new address in Boston, <laughs> and we have a little bit of trepidation because it's within walking distance of the State House. And so now, when the State House reopens, uh, it may not be a phone call, it may be a knock on the door. <laughs> and so, uh, we're already, I, I've already started measuring space, Mary, to see if we might be able to fit a desk in our office <laughs> so that you can have a place to work from. And, and that would be a welcome thing. But um, both Brad and I do not only want to thank you for your friendship, and your partnership, but we also want to wish you well as you do write these new chapters in your lives and as you explore Boston and all the things that it holds. But I know that you'll always remember that Boston is an exciting place, 
North Reading is a special place mm -hmm. and one that we hope you will always return to and always know how welcome you are and how much we care about you because of the way that you care about us. So congratulations and thank you for everything. And I, just one last thing, I, I do want to mention Dick Karn is here um, from our office and we have two liaisons from our office to the senior community, Dick Karn and Mary Ann Ney. Uh, Mary Ann's feeling a little bit under the weather, uh, but both of them uh, I know would want me to express their gratitude and their thanks as well because um, you have partnered with them and uh, we have truly appreciated the way that you've worked with our staff and the way that um, that partnership has endured through so many things. So thank you. Congratulations. We really appreciate you. Um, I do have citations. I know that um, you have a, a beautiful plaque um, that is coming from the, the board. We have some additional things. Um, Brad, I don't know how big the new space is, but um, you, you know. a lot of wild space. Okay, I was going to say maybe you might want to start thinking about some more. Um, but um, Brad has a citation from the House of Representatives that he will get to you when he has the opportunity to do that. Um, I have one from uh, all of my colleagues and myself in the Senate, and it reads Be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to Mary Prenny. Director of Elder Services for the Town of North Reading. In recognition of your many years of dedicated service, not only to the residents of North Reading, but also your commitment to the 11 communities serviced by Mystic Valley Elder Services. And be it further known that the Massachusetts Senate extends its best wishes for continued success, that this citation be duly signed by the President of the Senate and attested to in a copy thereof transmitted by the Clerk of the Senate. And this is signed by our Senate President, Karen Spilka. It's attested to by our clerk, Michael Hurley, and I'm proud to offer it. And we actually dated it for the actual day of your retirement because we didn't want to see you leave a day sooner <laughs> than you are. So it's dated for January 4th of 2022. Probably the first citation I will give. The last one of this year and the first one of the new year. Um, but also, I uh, have another citation again that Brad and I were talking with the governor, and he said, Mary Prenny can't be leaving. <laughs> so, um, but we do have this from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to Mary Prenny, the Director of Elder Services of the Town of North Reading, and it reads, on behalf of the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I'm pleased to confer upon you this governor's citation in recognition of your many years of dedicated service to the Town of North Reading and the 11 communities that are serviced by Mystic Valley Elder Services. And this is given on the fourth day of January in the year 2022 by Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth, and Karen E. Polito, Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth. And so Mary, congratulations thank and thank you. And I just, I want to tell the other members of your family how much we appreciate the service that Mary has given to us. We know that's meant she's been away at times and not always with you when she wanted to be. But I also hope that you will remember this night and remember the legacy that you now inherit and that you will carry forward. And just be very, very proud of Mary because we all are. Congratulations, Mary. Thank you. 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 <laughs> I always beg to go before, before, but I'm happy I was able to listen to all this wonderful, um, these wonderful things. Um, don't let me stay. <laughs> um, actually, it's been an honor. Oh, put these on. These may help. Um, it's been an honor to hold the keys to the most beautiful building in North Reading for all these years. Of course, I must say it could use a lot of loving. Uh, but it is still a beautiful building. And I want to thank you all for such kind words. I want to thank my staff, present, past and present, especially Sherry and Sue. Sue can't be with us today. She's on her way home. As always, helping a friend come home from Florida for doing their absolute best in the meeting the needs of our older residents, especially through COVID. It's been, needless to say, a very unique, complicated year for all of us. Um, I want to thank my colleagues at Town Hall, past and present, the staff at Mystic Valley Elder Services, and the staff and board members of the North Reading Housing Authority for their friendship and support throughout the years. And believe me, it really, truly does take a village to do this.
But most of all, I want to thank my wonderful family for your understanding and support. My daughter Kathleen, my granddaughter Anna, Hayden, Elizabeth, and right up there, my daughter Julia and uh, Tony. Uh, she's home right now in New Hampshire. Uh, we're waiting for uh, our grandson to be born in oh. February, so we're very excited about that. And up in the right-hand corner is my sister Claire, half ahead, <laughs> uh, who's joining us tonight. Um, but especially, I want to thank my amazing husband. You are truly amazing. And I can't wait for our new adventure to begin. I love you all, and I love you all very much. Thank you. so we can get some pictures while, while we have everyone here. Is that okay? Yes. Good. While we have our dignitary here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a brief recess. We'll get recess. Don't give him a talk. No, 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 no
I was saying, we had the real camera. This thing is like what? Like, like, what, like, what, like, what, like, what does it say on the back? Yes. Okay. Do you have a hammer? Uh, Two? Oh, I do. Right? Oh, yeah, the but I've never seen one with like a flat top. I've never seen that either. Because she does not. No, no, she doesn't use it. It won't like give me that thing. Oh, my God. I don't know if that was feeling heat or cold, but since you turned it off, it got colder in the room. This one, I, I, I turned it down. I have a long view. Yes. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hey, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 On that, on that one. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, are they? <laughs> Either way, that, that, yeah, like whatever uh, <coughs> the camera did for that thing, a mallet. Say, Phil. Phil. Maybe I can make uh, maybe hey, the mic. Does that stay there or does it go over there? No, it's it's it. Okay. Next time I make feel, maybe I can go over the ceiling or the restroom. Put the imprint in it. <laughs> Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to be a conference. Oh, okay. Yeah, it might be on what? I don't know. It could be. At least I need to listen. The town clerk is going to be speaking. Oh, she's sitting in your home. Oh, yeah, all right. So I just don't know how to fix it. That's just video. Michael, you don't have audio? Michael, you don't have audio? We have audio, but this feed is not going to NorCam for some reason. I think it previously it has. Yeah, that's weird. I wonder if I have time to use the bathroom. Probably. A little surface. Again? I know. We yes. usually oh, make we a have a camera. I know, but I don't have off. so much exchange yeah. well, today. Yeah, I, I can imagine. So I'm trying to like, usually I'm like, oh my god, does she have a <laughs> like I wish you took a recess. Oh, no, you should tell me. You can always go. Phil, if you're not hearing the audio yeah, from, the, are you not hearing the audio from the Zoom? I have. Okay. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna pay attention. Okay. okay. So you can control the people. Because I'm not. I had about seven oh. gallons of water. Brady screwed me good last night. Yahoo. My apparatus. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do. I do fly. And they've been averaging like 70 points. What's that? Oh, oh goodness. Oh yeah, it got it's really zero. cold in here. Yeah. Yeah. We got to go back to when Rashid Caldwell was a receiver, <laughs> and that and they might as well have had me in there. Okay. Are we talking football? We are. It's not a huge consequence, and we can repeat what she says. Yeah. You just get public comment, by the way. I'm going to go back to it. Yeah. Because Madam Chair. Senator Tarr was here. No, I understand. Yeah, I, I didn't want to, no, you know, I Mary's whole family was here. I want to shorten the meeting. Kids. Yeah, and the kids, and it's, yes, yeah. You We're the, the only, right you know. You did the right thing. Just, you know. Madam Chair. When we reconvene, I just want to make reference to the staff at the senior center. I sure, Sherry's agreed to stay just for a moment, if that's okay. I'm waiting for you to tell me when it's good to go. I think we have to be good to go at this point because I don't know that what needs to be corrected is going to be corrected. Yeah. So we'll make do. Okay. Yeah. We're good. All right. All right. Let's reconvene it. On, off, off, on.
824. Right, Mr. Studo? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, All right, we're gonna, we are going to go to public comment. Oh, wait, no, excuse me. Let me just turn it to you, Mr. Gilbert. Th thank you, Madam I'm Chair. Sorry about um, and I didn't have the opportunity when, when Ms., uh, Mrs. Prenny was here. But I do just want to let the community know that um, you know, we are in um, two capable hands in Sherry Greer and Susan Tilton, who are uh, both um, uh, employees up at the Senior Center and individuals who are very familiar to our senior com um, community. Um, you know, they've agreed to yeah, and are willing to keep things going up there uh, to continue providing services. To be clear, they are open up there. I know there's an impression that they're not. They are open. Um, they have been, uh, to the extent possible, honoring, uh, offering con congregate meal service and um, some programming as well in person. Um, and they will, uh, they've agreed to continue doing so to the extent uh, possible um, as conditions allow. Um, and um, you know, as we've had some discussion with the strategic, in the strategic planning meeting, you know, we'll be looking to you know, what the model will be for uh, providing human services, including elder services in the future, um, very soon. So I just want to let folks know, you know, to, the, to those who visit the Senior Center, Sherry's is a familiar face, Still here. as is Susan. Susan's is traveling tonight. She would have otherwise been here um, as well. And she actually was trying to get on the Zoom, I think, but then the timing just didn't work out. Uh, but I just want to let folks know that. Yeah, don't hesitate to reach out um, with regard to you know, whatever your needs might be. And we, we get to know them during the Thanksgiving yeah. stuff. So that's all we <laughs> they well, make that fun I've known for her us. forever. Forever. Yeah. Just forever. <laughs> no, that's great. We appreciate that. I don't know if anyone else has good questions hands. or yeah. does anyone have the, questions? Are we good or more to go more to come in the future uh, with regard to, to this uh, in the near future. Um, but uh, I'm confident that we're in good hands. So that's thank you, Sherry, and thank you, Susan, yeah, for your pleasure. willingness to step up. I have a big shoes to fill, but I, I can't do it. <laughs> you have that big shoe and you left. Yeah, you got it. Sherry's available to come around, and she can't get away very quickly. <laughs> yeah, I can't shut up. Sherry's going to lay it up here. I hope you heal quickly. Heal well. I promise. Although she does have that scooter there. Do you need to get this one done? Thank you very much. Thanks, Sherry. Thank you, Sherry. All right, so now let's turn it over to public comment. If there's anyone here that wishes to speak, please step forward. <laughs> Hearing from no one, let's go to the next item, uh, which is the Northeast Regional Vocational School District School Building Project. And we had in our packet the information on a special um, district election on January 25th, 2022, and we need to vote to affirm St. Teresa's as the polling location for that <coughs> special election that's to be held. Anything else on that, Mr. Gilberto? Um, Madam Chair, I believe you've adequately summarized it. Um, the town clerk is here to answer any questions. Uh, the polls will be open from 11 to 6, Madam Town Clerk, is that correct? That's correct. And uh, polling location will uh, is proposed, subject to the vote of the board, to be St. Teresa's, which is our regular uh, polling location for all four precincts. Okay. This is a special district election. The other member communities will be voting at the same time. And um, this is to consider um, the, the apportionment of debt for a Massachusetts school building authority project to construct a new Northeast Regional Vocational School um, at the site in Wakefield, uh, the same project that was considered and approved at town meeting in October. And do the, the amount of the construction, is there a, fi a final ver figure that people will be voting to approve? I believe it was $317 million. That, that was the number that was contemplated at the town meeting. I can check that to confirm. And I am not aware that that number has changed. In our portion, North Reading's portion of the contribution, we did a talk about this prior to town meeting. We did, the yes. North Reading's contribution towards that is, you estimated approximately 300000 per year for the next 30 years. Roughly, yes. So sure. that, that our, our portion is based on our enrollment, our, our, our number of students enrolled, which was, we're not at full, full s slot our enrollment there but we do have a high number of students enrolled and our our portion of that cost is related to the number that our percentage which I think you said was nine percent that sounds correct Madam Chair my computer okay. is not showing me my information so just no. to be alerting people to what they would be voting in favor or against would be to uh, allow the construction to proceed 
at that cost and and also then that has the consequence of us having to contribute 300,000 per year towards that debt for the next 30 years. Okay, any other comment or question? Yeah, Madam Chair. Mr. O'Leary. I think it's important for the public to understand why we're at this juncture. I mean, if you recall, we put a warrant article for consideration at town meeting, which, uh, by the way, passed unanimously in support of uh, meeting the needs of uh, the Northeast Metropolitan Regional Vocational Technical High School, uh, of which we're a member. And, and uh, obviously, the, the, the school is in tremendous need. And this community came out and unanimously supported it at town meeting. There were just two communities out of the 13 that did not have a favorable vote of support as we did. So two out of the, the 13 which forced the vocational school committee into the situation where they have to fund an, an election throughout the district, uh, district-wide, uh, to have an affirmative vote. What's important to understand is it's a simple majority vote of those members of the community. So every voter here in North Reading has an equal vote as do the people in <clears throat> excuse me, Riviera or Saugus or Chelsea or other places. So it's important that the people in North Reading participate in the special election, uh, hopefully have a high turnout in order to support this initiative because uh, the need is great. Uh, if you have over 600 students that are on a waiting list uh, at that school right now, this will uh, cut this down sub substantially. Uh, the school is antiquated. The school does not meet the needs uh, of our vocational education uh, needs of the students here in North Reading and across the district. So uh, I was dumbfounded when I found that the two of the communities didn't support it. Uh, initially, it was forcing them to go to this uh, this methodology. So I just want to impress upon and I call my colleagues to, to, to do the same thing, call on everybody in the community here to come out and support this, this initiative. You know, well, we may only represent a little bit less than 10% of the uh, school population there. <clears throat> the need for vocational education in a fine facility is paramount now more than ever. And we have a certain segment of our community uh, that we have to educate and invest in, and this is the investment we can make and should be making. So I want to press upon everybody, you know, put the date down. And again, it's a, it's a short version. I forget, was it uh, 11 to 11 to 6? 11 to 6. Uh, so it's a short day. Uh, just make the effort to get out and support this initiative, and uh, let's help offset the, the negative uh, vibes that some of these other communities have put forth which is unfortunate because this is a, a good deal, uh, good bargain. It's going to put together a facility that will serve us and our communities for the next 40, 50 years. So unfortunately, we're in this situation. Uh, I applaud the uh, Vocational School Committee and Mrs. Diamond you know, for uh, chairing the, the building committee uh, for moving forward. And uh, let's go out and support them. Mr. Gilberto? Just to ask, answer your questions, Madam Chair. So it's a $317,422,620 new building construction project, an estimated MSBA, Mass School Building Authority, reimbursement of $140,851,919. The remaining share would be $176,570,701. For North Reading, annual debt service payment beginning in 2023 would increase to $271,260 in 2026 for a total of approximately 30 of 30 years um, and the total town that the total amount that North Reading is expected to pay in principal and interest is 8.1 million dollars thank you okay over the 30 years over the 30 years yes okay all right thank you mr. Gilberto any other comment or question um, mr. Studo on the vote it's it's kind of each vote counts. It's not that if the majority of North Reading, then North Reading has one vote. It's actually no. each individual vote. Each individual vote counts okay. and it's majority rules. Okay. Oh. Do we have any it's other? It's not the majority communities have to support. <coughs> majority of people present and voting have to support. That's it. Okay. Is there any other questions? All right. Do we have a motion? Madam Town Clerk, have I missed anything? I think that covers it. You'll burn up the vote. Um, it just, uh, the statute just requires that the local select board be consulted on um, the polling locations, and so that's what we're here for. And the warrant actually will be signed by the district school committee. So this is the only action required locally. Thank you. Do we have a motion? 
Madam Chair, I move to affirm the polling location for all precincts for the January 25th, 2022 special district election to be St. Teresa's Church Hall, 63 Winter Street. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, <coughs> second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Clerk, for joining us. Thank you very much. To you. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thanks, Barbara. Next order of business is review affirm special municipal employee designations. Mr. Gilberto, there's a, there was a list in the packet, but um, if you could express the need for doing this again, uh, and, and why are we doing it now if these are summer, suppo supposed to be summer positions? Certainly, uh, Madam Chair, through you. These are positions that we traditionally have struggled to find um, employees from outside of the town or school uh, workforce. Um, the Human Resources Department conducts an annual review with the request of the board <coughs> with the previously authorized positions to see if any positions are, in, are, are able to be removed from the designation. And in the most recent review, um, we did not identify any positions that we were comfortable with removing at this point in time. So this vote would allow the special municipal employee designation to continue into calendar year 2022, most notably for the number of seasonal positions that the Parks and Recreation Department will begin advertising for um, in the coming weeks. Mr. Studo. I have a question. Um, I don't see the EDC, which we did. Remember what we did yeah. so we could have that event? Yes, we should add that. Thank you, Mr. Studo. So, do I just say economic development committees like as a whole? I don't have to. At the end, we say economic development committee member. Good Thank catch. You. Thank you. <laughs> well done, Mrs. Dudo. Oh, uh, every squirrel finds a nut once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Any other question on this? Um, do we have a motion? Madam Chair. I move to reconfirm the vote of December 7, 2020, designating the following positions as having special municipal employee status pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 268A, Parks and Recreation, Infant, Toddler Instructor, After School Instructor Coach, Summer Program Instructor Coach, Summer Program Director, Summer Program Assistant Director, Summer Counselor, Police, Matron, Crossing Guard, Council on Aging, Van Driver, Finance Committee Reporting Secretary, Police Department, co-facilitators for the Youth Action Team, Library, Substitute Library Technician, and the following position, the following position is voted on February 25th, 2019, Board of Health, Public Health Nurse, and it's July something that we voted for the EDC. But Economic I Development. Date. Economic Development Committee member would be the, the position. Well, we're on the date. I'm not sure that the date is necessary. The date is better for the yeah. so, And Economic Development Committee. Member. Member. Members. Members. In July 2021. Yeah. It can't be for a person. It has to be position related. OK, so we have a motion by Mr. Studo. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? <coughs> from the chair, I will say I'm concerned that we're just getting into the habit of routinely granting these, and there are a number of people that are looking for work, including seasonal work, like students who are, who may be capable of fulfilling these positions, some of them who, of whom who have been through the parks and rec and been in, you know, training and things like that to be counselors or, or other type of employees. I really do think that we shouldn't be in the habit of just continuing this. Maybe our recruitment efforts should be different, and maybe we should be looking to different um, available, um, you know, individuals that can fulfill these on a seasonal basis, like students, like college students, like high school students. So, so that that's just my thought. Uh, obviously, there's some of these that they can't, they can't fulfill. But you know, I I do feel like we should maybe get better at our recruiting of individuals for these positions. Instead of just keeping in this habit of saying, okay, we can't find anyone, so we're just gonna, you know, designate it special so we can use someone who's already working for the town. That's just my two cents on the matter. So that could be a role for that 
committee we're talking about Amen the to that. Community engagement committee, Absolutely. volunteer engagement committee. I just put it down as one of the things that I put And this is paid. This would be a paid position for someone. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Madam Chair, I concur with your comments because uh, he has passed. I have been very reluctant to uh, put a special police status on you know, different positions. Among other reasons, exactly what you're stating here. And I don't think we need to get in the habit of just because people did it before they can do it again, uh, when we should be opening it up and we're looking to engage more people, particularly for these part time summer jobs. Uh, I, I think you were spot on with your comments and just guidance to the administration as they search to fill these positions while these people are eligible, you know, be cognizant and be aware and be receptive to uh, other applicants. Any other comment? All set? Okay. On the motion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. Uh, next order of business is COVID-19 update, which we'll turn over to you, Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I put in the, uh, the meeting packet a copy of our most recent public announcement dated December 10th. <clears throat> And it reflected um, the increase in positive cases that we've seen in North Reading in recent weeks, uh, a trend that continued um, into, net, into last week um, and the, uh, the early part of this week. Um, the data that we put in there was dated um, December 9th, Thursday, December 9th, the regular state reporting date being Thursdays. <coughs> Excuse me. And so rather than um, referring to that data, I'll just go over the current state data is more accurate um, now at 86.2 uh, cases per 100,000 residents that's the daily incidence rate and then for the percent positivity rate for North Reading at 9.82 um, percent overall I think that the and so that's an increase from 7.7 uh, cases per 100,000 on uh, November 4th and 1.4 percent 1.47% positivity on that same day. So the message at that time that we wanted to put out to people is that there has been an increase in COVID um, level activity um, and that you know, our increases, um, you know, we, we, there are also increases happening at the state level and in the region and that most of us are following that information. There's been quite a bit of COVID activity. Um, we also wanted to make the community aware that the statewide community tracing collaborative um, was scheduled to and did close on November 30th, right after Thanksgiving. Um, shortly thereafter, the State Department of Public Health notified the town of North Reading and all communities that local health departments were advised to no longer prioritize investigating individual positive cases or contact tracing associated with those cases and to instead prioritize vaccinations. Um, we were advised to continue investigating cases at healthcare facilities, large congregate settings, early education and care centers, schools, higher education, um, which we uh, will continue to do through the public health nurse and through support staff that we have intermittently provided when case activity is required. Um, North Reading Public Schools do continue to conduct school-based contact tracing in accordance with state guidelines. And we just wanted to put out there for folks that there is information on the state website um, and the state has told us that they will commit to further publicizing that information to provide guidance for folks who do test positive for COVID-19 um, regarding quarantine and, and isolation requirements. And that information can be found off of the town website or off the state website as well. We continue to run multiple, to, to run vaccination clinics, and in this case, it'll be multiple clinics this week in conjunction with the school department and a third party contractor. Uh, we have a clinic open on Wednesday, December 22nd over at Hillview. Um, last I checked, there were still appointments that were available for that uh, clinic, so we encourage anyone who's looking be vaccinated or to receive a booster shot to participate. There will also be a school focused clinic that evening uh, at the Batchelder School, and I believe that there are still appointments available for, for that uh, as well. Um, I believe the clinics that have been scheduled, I think we're up to 35 clinics that we've had. So, um, where some communities have backed away from that, um, and we continue to make it available um, to the community. Um, our COVID-19 working group, the very group that's been meeting since March of 2020, um, continues to meet um, intermittently as needed and, and more recently every week or two. 
Um, we met as recently as today to discuss and review the data. Um, there has similarly been uh, an increase in activity in the schools um, in terms of uh, their, their cases and they continue to contact trace those cases. Um, our, our overall response uh, is uh, as it has been from the very beginning to follow the guidance that we're receiving uh, at the state level. Um, and so we felt it was important when this information was updated from the state to make it, make it clear to the community because it wasn't necessarily coming out to the community and other avenues. Um, I just want to make folks aware of what to expect moving forward. Um, and uh, we'll continue to monitor the caseload and to uh, make, make any recommendations where appropriate uh, and to act accordingly. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Just kind of a summary of where All things right. are. All right. Thank you, Mr. Gilberto. Any other, any questions on that? All right. Oh, Mr. O'Leary. Thank you, Madam Chair. As you know, what I've been um, as liaison, keeping in communication with the Board of Health, the tenant of meeting uh, last, last week. And uh, you were given, the town administrator pointed out, that positivity rate is now 9.82%. Now it's the highest in our region. Uh, the the uh, PowerPoint presentation, which was provided to all the members, you know, last week's data, you know, we were at 4.42. We're now at 9.82. Wilmington, and our, our comparable communities that we always get reported to is, you know, basically Wilmington, Linfield, North Andover, Andover, Reading, you know, directly touching us. Wilmington's at 8.4, uh, Reading at 7.67, Linfield 7.8, North Andover 5.1, Andover 6.37, statewide positivity rates 5.91 percent, was as of uh, this afternoon today, uh, significantly higher uh, than they were last week for the previous 14 <coughs> days. Just a few comments that, that took place uh, and observations from the Board of Health meeting again was the, uh, the news from the Department of Public Health and the guidance as the town administrator uh, pointed out, uh, significant change in focus and uh, attention as far as the contact tracing, they basically just abandoned it uh, in short order. Uh, we have put a substantial amount of recent human resources into uh, the contact tracing, which has been extremely effective, um, but now they're focusing on public messaging and vaccinations, which of course is important. Um, we still are continuing the contact tracing in those areas that the town administrator pointed out, uh, which is still extremely time consuming and human resource intensive. Uh, what's important to know is that you know our staff and people who are doing the contact tracing for us and on behalf of the community uh, in order to keep people safe and inform them wisely and well uh, are being, to say kindly, uh, disrespected and uh, in many cases verbal abuse, verbally abused uh, by members of our community who are somewhat angered by the fact that they're being notified that they may have been a close contact I think it's important for the public to understand, uh, nobody likes to deliver the message, first of all, but I think it's important that the public understand that it's uh, the value of knowing. Again, some people already know because they've been contacted by the people or individuals, but others have not been. <coughs> so in order to keep people safe, you know, we need to keep them informed. And our staff, and our public health nurse, are doing this as a public service, and it should be appreciated. I understand people want to somehow or another get out of uh, uh, the line of fire in relation to having to quarantine themselves and notify others, but you know, well, as unfortunate as that is, our staff and our people and our public nurse do not deserve uh, the treatment that they're getting. So I just want to make the board aware and the public aware at large because again, the vast majority of people are respectful and are appreciative. But for those small people, for the small number of people that are engaging in this behavior, they should be ashamed of themselves, and they should rethink their position, and they should be uh, appreciative as to the services that are being provided. Um, the other thing that's important uh, to recognize, again, you know, th these masks help, but they, you know, they don't stop the virus. Uh, the thing that really does assist is vaccination, and that uh, most recent uh, review by DPH found that 99.9% .9 of the breakthrough cases, this is important for the public to understand and my colleagues, uh, among fully vaccinated people under the age of 60, 60 
has not resulted in a single death. Among breakthrough cases for residents over 60, 97% have not resulted in death. So there are no deaths have been reported in breakthrough cases among those under the age of 30. So the review also, the review also found that unvaccinated residents are five times more likely to get infected than fully vaccinated residents. And that unvaccinated residents are 31 times more likely to become infected than fully vaccinated residents who have received the booster. So as the town administrator pointed out, we've run 35 clinics since March. So North Reading is doing their part, trying very hard to, to address the situation here. We ask for people to continue to participate. Can we have uh, approximately 70% fully vaccinated here in the community now, and 80% with at least one dose. So we've made significant headway. People are continuing now to come and uh, get vaccinated, and uh, we hope to see a continuation of that, and we hope to see more people coming in and getting the booster shots, because that's really what's needed with this latest variant. So again, uh, the numbers are staggering. If we're concerned about mask mandates, concerned about uh, economic impact on our community. There's only so much that we can do here in North Reading. And the Board of Health has been taking a, a measured approach by following DPH's guidance through this whole pandemic. Uh, stayed at the forefront of it. Has not necessarily jumped in front of it on, on uh, uh, some of the initiatives that some of the other communities have done. Uh, they would like to continue to follow that guidance, but they are not necessarily gonna shy away from the science and the need to uh, address things at the local level if they need to. They have not scheduled a special meeting. Uh, the next meeting is, I think, the 12th of, of January. But they will meet again if the numbers continue to get worse and try to determine if there's anything that locally that needs to be addressed. So we ask people to get, particularly people gathering the holidays, people being indoors now more, uh, the spread of it's gonna be uh, even worse. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable what's happened just in the last week by the last month. So let's be vigilant, let's all participate, let's uh, protect one another, let's uh, do what we can to assist in uh, beating this thing back and uh, diminish the mortality rate. Again, we're not gonna do away with the virus, it's here. It's here for quite a while. What we need to do is uh, do our part individually and uh, do what we can to protect one another and our own. So again, Again, I express on behalf of the board our appreciation for the Board of Health's uh, due diligence and hard work, and uh, to our professional staff, Mr. Bracey, uh, and to Pam Bath, who was a member of the uh, Board of Health, but also stepped back into the role of public health nurse, uh, because again, we have been unable to date to get another public health nurse. And we had a short term when there was uh, Ms. Hubby, uh, came for a short while and left, Pam retired, came back again. I think this is her third, third go around with us. So the community um, really needs to note a high level of appreciation for Pam because I don't know what we would do without her. But I think uh, Mr. Bracey would say the same thing. So they're working overtime, they're working hard, they're monitoring, they're asking for everybody's help and cooperation so that uh, things don't get any worse than they have to. That's all, thank you. Thanks, Mr. O'Leary. Yep, there are working, like you said, overtime and some stressful, that's very stressful time for us. So <coughs> people just need to be kind so that we can all make it through this. There's enough stress going around here that, you know, treat, treat them kindly. They're, they're trying to help. Uh, the other thing, just for my colleagues, again, when it comes budget time, you know, this isn't going away. The resources that it has been sucking out of the department over the last uh, 18 months and almost two years has been huge. In the meantime, the responsibilities haven't changed. So uh, I would not be surprised you know, that we are presented with a budget recommendation which would increase um, some staffing and level of services or hours uh, for positions in order to meet just the day-to-day, week-to-week needs of the Board of Health and meeting the responsibilities in addition to what, what COVID has done. So just be aware that uh, there was a conversation I had with the public safety director in relation to that also. So um, the request will probably be coming. All right. Thanks, Mr. I'll consider that to be at least part of the board member report. 
Yeah, I'm done with that. Well, it's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a double. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other questions or comments on the update? I'll I just, I literally just signed up for my booster right now. Nice. So I'll see you on the Wait a minute. Weren't second. you paying attention to Mr. Yeah, Larry? I, was, I can do two things to say. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what sold him. him. <laughs> that's what sold him. I'm like, you got to take yeah, action. No, you got to yeah, jump yeah, right in. Right. So that's right. That's right, Thank you for your immediate response, and thank you for listening. I know, really. All right, great. See you at 220. 1222. <laughs> nice. All right. Okay. License. Next order of business. License renewals. Do we have? Um, Madam Chair, I suggest that the one you can't vote on, yeah. we'll just do that first, and then we'll get it. Let me let me recuse myself for having a family member that uh, formerly worked there. And I pass this. So I'll pass it over to Mrs. Gonzalez. So we're going to. Madam Vice Chair, I move to renew the following common vehicle licenses to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirement. Kylie's Coffee, DBA, Heavenly Donuts. Second. Here we have a motion by Mr. Estudo. We have a second by Mr. O'Leary. And can we just do all in favor on this? Yeah, all in favor? Yeah. <laughs> Aye. 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 One is three. And I will pass it back over All to right. the chair. On, on our next license is Mr. Studo. Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to review the following on particular licenses to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. <clears throat> Swarash, LLC, DBA, Subway, McDonald's, Nan Central Cafe, Dairy Queen, to the Dogs Restaurant Management, DBA Sports, Spirits, and Steaks, Grill 19, Yeba Group, LLC, DBA, DBA Teresa Prime Grill 19, Admir Sons, and DBA Next Place. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. I never give anybody discussion. Yeah. <laughs> so. Maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> All right, next order of business ABCC renewal certification. So Excuse me, I'm sorry. Thank Just, uh, you. Mr. Studo. See, I was fl I was flipping through to make sure, but I I didn't get to that part. My signature's getting progressively worse. Yeah, because I don't know what line you're on. It gets me in trouble. <laughs> All right. I didn't say you can blame me. I said I can blame you. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move to renew the following common all alcohol licenses that expire December 31st. 2022 subject to all regulatory department requirements to the Dogs Restaurant Management DBA Sports Spirits and Steaks, Grill 19, Yepa Group LLC, DBA, Teresa's Prime, Grill 19. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Still more. I do. I'm to that motion. Oh, uh, Madam Chair, I move to renew the following package store all alcohol licenses to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements, one stop liquors, name. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following package stores wine and malt beverage license to expire December 31st. 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements, Smokes and Snacks, Inc., DBA, Brew 28, Lucky Martin. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following automatic amusement device licenses to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. To the Dogs Restaurant Management, DBA Sports Spirits, Steaks. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following Sunday entertainment license to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Grill 19, Yeba Group, LLC, DBA, Teresa. Prime Girl 19. Second. 
Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, now we're done. <laughs> okay, our next order of business. No, I, I, I see our clerk is waving at us, so we're yeah. not done yet. She just signed this one, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why not? We can. Uh, oh, no. We can move on. Okay. We're gonna this one is just the opening. We're going to move on to, to the next. Oh, do you want to wait and just send those one, all of one by one? Madam Chair. Let's, let's, uh, let's try to clear up this confusion. What's the confusion? I'm not sure. There is no, no, no confusion, but Madam Chair, you are the only person who should sign the Sunday entertainment license. That's yeah. All, that's all that, we're trying that's to do. That's all I'm trying to do. That's the only difference. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I, can, I don't have to sign them now. I was just trying to move on to the next order of business. But I'll check, I will remain here so that you can make sure you have all of our signatures after the meeting. All right? And uh, okay. let's move on to the next order of business. Okay. It's an ABCC renewal certification form, vote to approve and sign. Mr. Gilberto, oh, Mr. Gilberto the basis for this? Thank you. It's an annual certification of uh, those that have renewed and not renewed. Um, it requires a vote to approve and then your signature or a signature from the board. All right. Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve and sign the ABCC renewal certification form. Certification form. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo. Second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. I'm sorry, did anyone have any comment about that or discussion? The vote stands. Okay. Next order of business, ABCC certification form. Madam Tenor isn't here, right? Or are they separate? They're separate. They're separate, okay. That's all I need to know. Madam Chair, I move to approve and sign the licensing authority certification form to correct address of the loyal order of proofs. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Gilbert, on the basis of this request. Thank you, Madam Chair. To some, including yourself, possibly, I may have relayed that there was a long time error on the license. It's actually not correct. The, 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 the address has been correct for a long time and for some unknown reason when the license came back to us from the ABCC it showed a P.O. box. So they required that this be corrected even though we are fairly confident we did not submit it to them with a P.O. box. Nonetheless a vote was requested and so we therefore asked for this vote and for the board signature on the form. The loyal order of moves, order order moves has not moved to dispel any rumors. It's still in the same location on North Street. Okay, do, we did have a second to that motion, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry about that. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. <laughs> We're all this busy. one here that I'm sending around, we already voted for this last meeting, yes? We just have to resign, correct? Yes. So we already voted for this meeting to resign. Yes, okay, so now our next order of, of business is to amend the recycle committee charge to authorize associate members. Before we go to the motion, Mr. Gilberto, how many members are on the recycling committee and how many associate members are proposed? Um, Madam Chair, through you, I don't know that a, uh, there's a limit proposed on the associate membership of the committee. Uh, I will look to the town clerk. Are you looking that up right now, Mr. Yes, Gilberto? I am, thank you. Um, and, and the associate members would have, a, what, voting rights on the committee? No. They would not. What are they there for? I'll defer to the liaison, Madam Chair, but I believe it's an intent to try to um, expose individuals who are interested in potential future service to the committee. And could they be called upon by the chair of the committee in the absence of an, a, a regular member to vote as long as they were there for the business? That is not my understanding of the intention, no. 
Okay. And to answer your previous question, it's a seven member committee. Is Are all seven um, uh, spots filled right now? There's one vacancy which I believe is going to be filled along with reappointments later this, this evening. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the, this particular vote, I, I guess we can hear from the liaison, but shouldn't we be voting on a specific number of associate members? I, I don't think it makes sense I to vote on limited members. No, I thought it was. I thought there was a number. Uh, it's no. a, it, it is three. I might three. apologize. Three associate members. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they would not be able to be called upon to vote. They would not be. They would not be. Okay. All right. Okay. Anything else on this um, agenda item, Mrs. Gonzalez? Um, yeah, just so it came up because there has been um, a lot of activity, people wanting to be involved. Um, so in a conversation with the chair and PTA, um, we felt like it would be a benefit to the committee to have these people as associates so they could still be involved with the committee not voting but but could be involved and would be there when a slot opened to be able to um, be put in so we just thought it would be a benefit to the committee to have that That's as great. a lot of committees do have okay so do we have a motion madam chair i move to amend the recycling committee membership by adding three associate members for indefinite terms second Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? I'll say from the chair, this is yet another example of the bringing the, bringing the youth on board. I think this is a great opportunity to bring some, some <coughs> younger generation individuals to the table to this type of service to get you know, steeped in what the recycling committee's been dealing with, and you know, have a voice at the table. So, any other comment on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Next order of business: appointments, which we have, I think, not too many, but enough, <laughs> Mr. Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination of the following names for reappointment as process service constables for terms to expire December 31st, 2022. There are five openings. John Fiorello, incumbent. Douglas Ladd, incumbent. David Rosati, incumbent. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Gilbert, these are all recommended by the police chief for reappointment. They have been uh, vetted through the normal appointment process, which includes the police department, yes. All right, so this is a name. And they're all reappointments. <coughs> reappointments, yes. So this is a roll call name. We, will we still do the analysis with reappointments, So You send up the form for the police department on, the, on these guys, or no? I mean, I have spoken with the police chief about these candidates. I'm not concerned that there's any, okay. any issue. There's we, we no know all issue with yeah, the all, all police out. chief. Okay, so this is an, a roll call name vote. Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Fiorello, Mr. Lab, Mr. Rosetti. Mr. Walner. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Fiorello, Mr. Lab, Mr. Rosetti. Mr. Studo. Mr. Ferrello, Mr. Ladd, Mr. Rosado. Mrs. Gonzalez. Mr. Ferrello, Mr. Ladd, Mr. Rosado. And Manu Pelli is Fiorello, Lab, and Rosati. So it's unanimously reappointed. Madam Chair, I move to place the nomination of the following names for reappointment to the Conservation Commission for terms to expire. December 31st, 2024, two openings. Lloyd Minkheimer, I said that right. Lloyd yes. Uh, incumbent, Randall Mason, incumbent. Madam Chair. 
Motion. We have a motion second. and a second by <laughs> Mr. O'Leary. <laughs> Mr. O'Leary, let's hear from you, please. Hear from me, okay. Uh, so, uh, Laurie Mishner has been a long time chair and is seeking reappointment, which uh, we uh, did for tremendous work and tremendous service for the community, along with uh, Mr. Mason, who was appointed probably, I think, three years ago and served as an associate member prior to. So, uh, recommending that we reappoint both members. Uh, there are some vacancies for associate membership, uh, but we're not prepared this evening to, because uh, we have this all the candidates, all the people who put in the citizens' activity forms uh, as of yet. So after the first of the year, we'll be doing that. So fortunately, as you're all aware, we had some uh, difficulty in filling the conservation position clause over the past few years, and that's not the case anymore. So that's a good thing. So I would recommend uh, Ms. Michener and Mr. Mason. Mr. O'Leary, how many associate member positions remain open, if you know? I believe there's going to be two now, one on expired term and then a, a full associate membership term. Okay. All right, thank you. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? It's a name, it's a roll call name vote. Uh, Ms. Mich Michener and Mr. Mason have been nominated. Mr. O'Leary. Lori Michener, Randall Mason. Mr. Walner. Lori Mishner, Randall Mason. Mr. Studo. Lori Mishner, Randall Mason. Mrs. Gonzalez. Lori Mishner, Randall Mason. And Manny Pelley is Mishner and Mason. It's unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to place in nomination the following names for appointment to the Cultural Council for terms to expire on December 31st, 2024. There are two openings. Rebecca M. Griffin, Francis Tonaguso. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. Walner. Yeah. We'll hear from the liaison. Yep. Yeah. Just um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Walner, I'm sorry. Yeah. We'll hear from the liaison. These would be two uh, open spots on the committee. Uh, the chair and co-chair uh, recommend, and so they're both being they're being recommended to uh, join the culture council. All right. Thank you. We have a. a a roll call name vote. Mr. O'Leary. <coughs> Rebecca Griffin, Francis Tonaguzo. Mr. Walner. Rebecca Griffin, Francis Tonaguzo. Mr. Studo. Rebecca Griffin, Francis Tonaguzo. Mrs. Gonzalez. Rebecca Griffin, Francis Tonaguzo. And Manny Pelly is Griffin and Tonaguzo, so it's a unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination of the following name for reappointment to the Historic District Commission for terms to expire on December 31st, 2024. Two openings, William Brinkmeyer. Brinkmeyer. One, one nomination for, for those yes. two openings. Motion and a second by, motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. It seems kind of obvious, but we'll hear from the ladies. <laughs> Yeah, no, Williams continue on, so that's great. Um, I'll just remind this group did a nice job working with the um, development. I can't think of who's the uh, developer. Um, Mr. Wheeler. Sorry, Mr. The Wheeler, Wheeler. The Wheeler property. They did really, I, I sat on a bunch of meetings, and they did a really nice job going back and forth. Uh, the developer was very responsive. This group was very uh, proactive and advocating for it to fit in well with the, uh, the district. That set. They did a nice job for us making that go forward. That was a smooth uh, development. So, um, recommend William. And I'll also say they're going to be interviewing more people come January than to get more people involved. So, there'll be more additions coming later on. All right. Any other discussion on the motion? We have a motion by Mr. Sudo and was seconded by Mr. Walner. I'll, oh, this is roll call vote. Mr. O'Leary. William Burkmeyer. Mr. Walner. William Burkmeyer. Mr. Studo. William Burkmeyer. Mrs. Gonzalez. William Burkmeyer. And Minnie Pelly is Burkmeyer. It's unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination the following names for reappointment appointments of the Veterans Event Committee for terms to expire on December 31st, 2024. There are two openings Deborah Aldrich, incumbent. Second. Motion by Mr. Studer. So you say. Second by Mr. O'Leary. 
keeping Mr. O'Leary busy with the seconds here. All right, and we will hear from the liaison. Um, so Deborah Aldridge is an incumbent. She's been a, um, a great addition to the committee, so um, we would like to reappoint her. There is another opening, and there are citizens' activity forms for that, um, but we've just had a little trouble with timing and talking to the chair and um, getting that going, so we'll bring that forward in January. But we wanted to get um, Deborah Aldrich. All right. You got to move this on to a vote because Mr. Studo's getting tired over there. No, 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 no. I'm always tired, so it doesn't matter. All right. So we have a motion. Uh, to reappoint Mrs. Aldridge, and this is a uh, roll call name vote. Mr. O'Leary. Deborah Aldridge. Mr. Walner. Deborah Aldridge. Mr. Studio. Deborah Aldridge. Mrs. Gonzalez. Deborah Aldridge. And Manu Pelli is Aldridge. It's unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination of the following name for appointment to the Recycling Committee for an indefinite term, one opening. Nick J. Amato, indefinite. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. We'll hear from the liaison. Yep, so Nick has actually been on a lot of the meetings. He's, he's always there. Um, so it was just natural. He put his form in, and we're happy to have him be part of it. Okay. Mr. Uh, Mo we have a motion on the floor. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Nick J. Amato. Mr. Walner. Nick Amato. Mr. Studo. Nick J. Amato. Mrs. Gonzalez. <laughs> Nick J. Amato. The menu Pelli is Amato. It's unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination of the following names for reappointment to the Water Commission for terms to expire on December 31st, 2024. One opening, Joseph Cimino. 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 Excuse me, I, I pronounced it the way they wouldn't have. Cimino. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Uh, we'll hear from the liaison. Mr. Studo or Mr. O'Leary? Mr. O'Leary. I'm doing enough talking. <laughs> Mr. Simino has been uh, serving on the Water Commission for a number of years and again is wishing to be reappointed and is certainly deserving of our support. Okay, this is a uh, roll call vote, Mr. O'Leary. Joseph Simino. Mr. Walner. Mr. Simino. Mr. Studo. Joseph Simino. Ms. Mrs. Gonzalez. <laughs> Joseph Simino. And Manu Pelli is Simino. Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination the following names for reappointment and appointment to the Youth Services Committee for terms to expire, as noted. Jason Slatter, Slattery, incumbent, December 31st, 2024. Jacob Mullen Bernstein, December 31st, 2024. Beatrice Bodden, December 31st, 2022. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Mrs. Gonzalez will hear from you. Uh, yep, so Jason Slattery is an incumbent and we're happy to have him want to stay on. Um, Jacob Mullen Bernstein is a famous name in this town. It's Rita Mullen's son. Um, so happy to see him following in his mom's footsteps and wanting to be involved. And Beatrice Fulton um, has joined in a meeting and introduced herself, and so we're happy to have these people yeah, appointed. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary. Jason Slattery, Jacob Mullen Bernstein, Beatrice Fulton. Mr. Walner. Jason Slattery, Jacob Mullen Bernstein, Beatrice Fulton. Mr. Studo. Jason Slattery, Jacob Mullen Bernstein, Beatrice Watch. Mrs. Gonzalez. Jason Slattery, Jacob Mullen Bernstein, and Beatrice Watch. And Manu Pelli is Slattery, Mullen Bernstein, and Fodden. And it's unanimous. Nice to see another generation stepping up here. That's right. Yeah. Well, I'll just comment. Uh, the Commission on Disabilities, we're down to one member, so that's going to be a major rebuild to bring that all back up. Um, and so we'll be working on that. And then the tax committee, um, Mary's no longer on that, Mary Prenny, so that'll also be we need to be engaged that one as well. So those are two people. Well, as far as Mr. Uh, Sudo and I also have under uh, 
titles here, the, uh, the Wastewater Advisory Committee. Uh, we're not quite ready yet to build that. I think what we're looking to do is, is get the project a little further along now that we have a definitive plan moving forward before we form the advisory committee to assist us in um, reviewing the work that's being done and then uh, hopefully selling the whole thing to the community you know, in October. So it'll be later on, probably in the spring, consulting with the, the administration and uh, we'll be consulting with the working group as to uh, what goals we really see them playing at this point and how can they assist us? So until we define the ambition a little bit better, we don't want to be appointing people. We're not sure what we're going to be doing yet. Okay. I concur. Okay. I'll just and I'll just briefly put the libraries. They are down. They're going to be interviewing three prospective trustees in January. So we're going to probably address that in January. It was just timing was such that. That's they, at their next meeting, they'll be interviewing the potential replacements. All right. So I think that covers it for appointments. If we can move on to the next order of business. Um, Legal bills. Minutes. Oh, I'm. Um, I scratched so much. I scratched my paper up so much. I skipped over the minutes. Next order of business was minutes. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, I want to acknowledge and thank you for your efforts to submit um, meeting minutes and your revisions to the meeting minutes. We've been able to review some, but not all of them. Um, so, if it's okay with you, my suggestion would be that we allow the recording secretary and I to go through them, just adding the remaining bits and pieces of information, and then we'll bring them all to the board to vote on, on January 10th. Okay, so you do want us to pass over this this I, evening? I think if that's okay with you, sure. I know you put a lot of work into it, but sure. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, I mean, as, as long as that's okay with the members, and, that, and then the members can, we'll look at them again after they've been finished. Is there anything we can sign off on or no? Because I, <laughs> Honestly, there, there, there may be, but it would be a painful exercise, I think, trying to figure that out, I think, at this stage. Okay. So right. my recommendation is right. there's a couple things the chair pointed out to me. We spoke. Okay. And I think we can get them right there for the next meeting. But I, I'll, I'll spare you <laughs> the exercise this evening. Right. Right. Thank you. All right. Now legal bills. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for September 2021 in the amount of Fourteen thousand five ninety five twenty nine as follows general eight thousand four forty five twenty nine labor forty seven seventy six fifty twenty L street thirteen seventy three fifty for a total of fourteen five ninety five twenty nine. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Now we're on to next order of business, which is the town administrator's report. Madam Chair, through you, just one item to report. Um, where it is uh, holiday weeks this week and next, just to, the, you know, to let the community know, the uh, town hall will be closed on Friday, <coughs> December 4th, uh, observing the uh, Christmas holiday, and the town hall will close at noontime on Thursday, December 23rd. Um, same is true for the Flint Memorial Library and for the uh, Edith O'Leary Senior Center. Um, the following week, uh, those buildings will be closed uh, for the day on Friday, December 31st, but will be open regular hours on Thursday, December 30th. That concludes my report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. All right. Now we are on to board member reports. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, I already did Board of Health. Uh, again, Hillview again continues to uh, engage with individuals who are interested in uh, getting a license agreement with the uh, function hall facility and we hope to have that come to some conclusion within the next uh, few weeks so uh, that's moving forward and again the commission is putting in an enormous amount of work good effort and uh, we greatly appreciate it other than that madam chair i'll go to old news too which is uh, just basically wish my colleagues and administration and jen and phil and maureen and everyone else who's tuning in in the community you know a uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy New Year, and may the next year be happy, healthy, and prosperous for everybody. So, thank you. Thanks, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Walner. Uh, nothing reported this time. Did, did you want to 
Did you? Was that your new new business? Old and new business too. That was too? my old and new too. I took it all at once. All right. Oh, Did so you? I'll just remind. I, I can't be here for our board meeting. Old business. Um, I can't be here for a January twenty fourth meeting, which I think everybody's penciled into their book. So. Did you want to see if we would reschedule that, or have we scheduled that for a purpose? That was scheduled. We, we scheduled it as part of our regular schedule, but if we want to look at the I calendar. don't know if you, is that something you, do you want to be at? <laughs> I'm going to be in Barbados, so this yeah. time I'm not going to be. No, oh, that's you're, right. Really? That's right. You set a precedent <laughs> here. No, I, mentioned this, I mentioned this when we were doing it. That that we, we don't like to, but we'll proceed on without you. How is that? So okay, you can just minute. enjoy yourself there. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's fine. Okay. Anything else for older no, move? Thank you. All right. No, if there's anything you don't want us to act on, <laughs> you might want to keep it to yourself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I trust you guys. It's been a good year. It's been a good year for us. Yeah. It's been a, nice, yeah. a good experience this year. So thank you. All right. Mr. Studo. I will just uh, also say Merry Christmas to everyone. I know it was a. Uh, not the way everybody thought we were going to end the year, especially with all the progress that was being made, but um, uh, it does uh, seem that uh, just like most things in life, time is the only thing we got that will uh, you know, heal and make things better. So everyone have a nice Christmas, um, safely, eat and drink too much, because I will, um, and uh, mm -hmm. see everybody in the new year. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Studer. Mrs. Gonzalez. Yeah, uh, no, I have nothing to report, and we'll just echo my colleagues for everybody to have a safe and happy holiday and um, a very happy and prosperous year. Okay. Oh, and I'll say the same. I hope everyone enjoys peaceful holidays, peaceful, peaceful holidays, safe holidays, and I just want to also thank my colleagues. It's been a challenging year but there are a lot of initiatives that we've been able to keep our sights on and move forward and I appreciate all of the effort it's not just these meetings it's countless hours of meetings and other obligations that um, the board tends to that um, that go sight unseen so I just want to acknowledge that and thank thank my colleagues for their for their ongoing commitment and moving some of these initiatives forward despite the challenging year. So, with that. Madam Chair, I move to adjourn for the last time <laughs> in 2021. That's right. Yeah, I'll second that. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous.